I get asked a lot about painting. Um, and I'm going to talk about some elements that are important. Now, a painting uh, should be about one of three things. Light, value, or color. Now, some people have a tendency to say, oh, well, you say this is true, and these are rules, and really there are no rules, and this stuff doesn't, you know, doesn't count. Um, and, you know, I guess that's okay. R rules are meant to be broken, but the thing about these elements is that uh, you can see them at play in any given painting. So, um... The trouble is, is that when a painting tries to be about uh, all of them at the same time or two of them in competition, then it actually sort of reduces the, uh, the power of your painting, the directness of it. And uh, of course in some circles, like the paperback, well, who buys paperback books anymore? But sort of modern fantasy art that's been driven in a certain direction by art directors, um, they wanted to see all of these at play in a single cover. So let's amp up the color, amp up the value, and uh, have all kinds of glowing light play going on, things like that. So anyway, um, I'm going to insert some paintings in here that uh, illustrate the differences between these three approaches. So here's the painting about light. I don't know what it is. I'm inserting it later. Hopefully you can understand that it's about light. Now here's another one about value. Now with value, of course there is light and there is color, but they're not the uh, dominant elements. Okay. Now when it comes to color, um, obviously something like a Van Gogh is about color. So that's simple enough too. But you could see what would happen if you took a Van Gogh and tried to include these other elements in equal proportion. Uh, it would be crazy, but of course, there's your art directors for you. So, anyway, that's a, a good set of uh, rules to remember, and when you begin a painting, you're going to want to know which effect you're trying to get. That's going to be integral. I've got to do a couple of paintings at the moment for some people, and I've got to figure out what the painting is going to be about before I begin the painting. So anyway, that's one thing to think about. Um, Another thing about painting is that even if a painting is about light or color, there are still values. And some could say there's an infinite range of values in any given picture, and you know, in a way they're right, but that doesn't make things really workable. You know in Photoshop, when you look at the values, it creates what's called a histogram. And the histogram may look something like this. And... Um, in a lot of scans or photographs, there's not, there's not pure black. This is the black end of the spectrum. This is the white. So you're going to get the darkest area, and then you're going to get other values, of medi you know, some mediums, and then uh, often, uh, often white looks like this because uh, there's something approaching pure white in the picture. Um, anyway, if you had a picture that had uh, an equal value range, of course, it would look like that. Equal amounts of black, white, blah, blah, blah. If you have a histogram for, say, a paper cutout where there are three different values of construction paper, you get something that looks like this. Spikes. So anyway, that's all one way to think about value. But in any given painting, what I'm really talking about is four values, right? It's number four. Now what happens with these values is when you work with them in your picture frame, your picture plane, they occupy different areas. There's a different quantity of them in the areas. So say for example this is a value. We'll call that one. Here's a second value. 
which is two. Now a third value is three and four. Now in terms of the area occupied, one is most, three is probably second, two is third, fourth, four is fourth. I actually got them backwards. I've never done anything quite like this before in trying to explain this. But you can see, um, imagine in a painting where, say, that's your, your, your lightest value, four is your darkest value, and then here are two middle tones. Right? So, what we have here in terms of value is a pattern. There's your greatest value, your next greatest value in quantity, third greatest, and least. Now this is really what I'm talking about uh, as being important to remember. This is the four value system and you want to have the four values in descending quantity geometrically descending quantity. If you created a painting where the four values, you know, were spread around the painting, but each one occupied the same area, you would have a very, very dull painting. And don't take my word for it, try it yourself. Now, the thing about the value range, if you know that the value range is going to decrease in quantity. What these actually are, whether this is one or three or four or, or mid-tone or dark or white or whatever, none of that matters. This one could be the darkest. This could be the middle tone, a middle tone, and this could be the other middle tone. It doesn't matter which one occupies which amount. Uh, just as long as there are four and they're in decreasing quantity, you're going to get an incredibly balanced painting. Now, when you add that to knowing what your painting is about to begin with, light value or color, then my God, you're already ahead of the game. So, when you're using this, when you're painting, you don't have to mathematically sit down and figure, yeah, maybe you might in the beginning, where you're very, very aware, or you do roughs, of how much area your values are occupying. Yeah, you can do that, but once you really drill it into your head, it's going to become second nature. So when you're allowing a painting to evolve, uh, it could be a painting that you didn't do a rough for, um, then when you're wheeling that brush and you've got the dark or the lightest or a middle tone, then you're kind of going to, it's going to help you know when to stop help you know to keep that value in balance with the other values. So anyway, you can look, you can use, also use this as a, um, a check, a proof of your painting. If you look at the painting, you don't quite know why it's not working or why aren't I better, why can't I be better. Perhaps you need to figure out if your painting is about light value or color and if your values are balanced. Uh, maybe I should come up with a generic term, trademark, for um, what this is. Uh, it's a descending order, descending quantity, a descending area, whatever. Anyway, I hope you get the idea and can use it in your work. Good luck. Goodbye.